Uh, welcome to a new video. It has been a while that I was talking about Sailfish OS. That's not really my fault because no new version came out. Now we have a new early access version, version 4.5 Strivin Ketio that is out right now. And I want to show you some of the brand new features in this new version. So let's get started. So let's start off with one of the biggest changes that we have in this brand new version of Sailfish OS and that is the Android app support. So if you scroll down to Android app support you will see that we have now Android version 11 that is supported, API level 13 and the app support is running right now. We have all the features here and the cool thing about this one is when you press here a few times it will bring you into the Android settings that you can see here right now. And we can see that this Android in a container, how I would call it, has also no new sailfishonized icons. This is how I would call them. So you can see that these icons have now like a sailfish OS kind of wipe uh, and um, change uh, and style. And when we take a look at the version itself, we can see it's Android version 11, um, 5th of October 2022 is the security update here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this is uh, recent enough, but anyway, we have this new Android runtime version. With this new Android runtime version, we get a few of improvements, of course, a plethora of improvements actually. So when we take a look at Android applications, first of all, all those Android applications. Now you can see Router uh, Revance and YouTube Advanced, for example, but maybe I have some others here. You can see that they have also like this Sailfish kind of style of an icon. So if I go here, KD Connect, for example, as well, and in Maps, Google Maps, here we go, Maps as well. So yeah, they have this new kind of icon style, which makes them more integrated into the system. They don't feel out of place most of the time, which is pretty, pretty nice indeed. So what do we have new here with the Android app support as well is quicker launch time. So if I just go, for example, to YouTube, advanced here you can see it's launching immediately and i'm in my uh, app here and i can also go to let's say app stores and go to apk pure you can see also it's launching immediately so i don't have like any delay and i can switch between those apps without any issues which is pretty pretty nice we have better app integration with android uh, applications for example I can open up uh, Spotify here and I have the possibility to play back something so let's go and play back this year from my latest and greatest uh, um, album that I would recommend here uh, from Red Wimps so what I can do now the integration allows me to um, go into the lock screen and what I can see on the lock screen is here at the bottom we have the controls for pause and playback usually it should also show me yeah here we can see artwork as well so it depends on the on the song that you're playing if it has artwork it's also showing the artwork of the song playing which is pretty pretty nice indeed so you have the possibility to do uh, this as well let me quickly unlock this one here so this is a pretty cool feature that comes with the new android app support Let's take a look at some other things that have been changed. For example, we have now better support for a ringtone. So when we go into sounds and feedback or we go into ambiences in particular, uh, let me edit this. I cannot edit this. Let go. Let's go to one of those. I have some settings in the ambience itself and I can set like an action here and I can set a ringtone here. What I have now here included is support for SD card ringtones that will also appear here and they will stay here until you remove the SD card. So there was a long, long bug which uh, does not allow you to take those uh, SD card saved ringtones. This is now available here. Uh, gladly they fixed it now. Then we have um, the when I go to my accounts under Nextcloud, you can see that I have the backup ability. 
And if I go into settings and go to my backup option, I have the ability to set up a schedule to automatically backup my device credentials, my device settings. And this was broken somehow in the earlier version. This is now working again. So backup daily, I can choose here weekly or monthly, and I can choose a time and a connection type. So for example, if I'm only connected to Wi-Fi, then do the backup. So this is the possibility that I have now here that was previously broken is fixed now. When we are in settings, if you have Safefish Utilities installed, we have a new option here for everyone that had issues in the past with Bluetooth. They will really, really like this option because we have the option now to restart with the Bluetooth subsystem. So it's not only like turning Bluetooth on and off, but restarting the whole subsystem that is running Bluetooth. Sometimes it's necessary because yeah, the stack is a bit buggy or there are some issues and you have the possibility now in Sailfish Utilities to do this exact thing, which is pretty, pretty nice here. So this is something for people who are playing around a lot with Bluetooth devices. Then we have a big Bluetooth, uh, a big browser update from Bluetooth to browser. Um, big in this case with several like optimizations that make the browser simply better. So here we can see the change log, for example. So scrolling, clicking links is much more reliable for specific websites, but we have also now dark mode support. So I'm going to this dark mode testing page here. That's uh, optimized for desktops, not so much for um, smartphones, but you can see happiness, your browser is in dark mode and respects the user's dark mode choices. So if you have dark mode enabled, the browser now supports this tag as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, let's go into another web page on another web page. And uh, for example, this web page, and we have like this logo here of Yola. What we can do now with the logo, long press, hold, and long press hold and then we have the option not to only open it in a new tab save it but also share this image and this allows us directly to share an image from a web page to uh, various different devices or um, various different programs you can see i have twitter here i have kd connect so also android apps are in here this is i think a change that we had before already Pretty nice that we have this now in the browser as well. Lots of other small bug fixes in the browsers that I can highly recommend uh, you to try out. And uh, I want to go to the next thing, which is the calendar modes, uh, because we have here a change in terms of calendar. So let's go into the calendar. And what we can see here is a new interface because we had an old calendar interface on 4.4, which looked like this, this Xperia 10. Uh, Mark II, I think it is, and uh, this is the 10 Mark III. We can see we have now new free buttons here at the top, which allow us to switch between a month mode to a weekly mode and then to a daily mode as well, which is pretty interesting. Before we had only this month view and we had this today button here where we can click on this and this will give us like the today data but we didn't have any uh, weekly mode and it's, I'm, I, I really like this weekly mode sometimes especially if you're working or something like this you can see your appointments that you have in this like manner which is pretty pretty cool so not only like this as a global overview so uh, away with this old device that's still not updated because it's still charging um, so this is a very very cool feature that we have now the buttons to switch between those modes and uh, there are lots of lots of other um, things that I cannot show you right now but if you have an event for example and you cancel the event in the past it was like it was removed from the calendar now it is not removed from the calendar it will remain on the calendar but will uh, have a nice um, graphic that will say or indicator that says it is cancelled. Then when we have alarms here in our calendar, if you are in do not disturb mode, which I think I should be, yeah, do not disturb mode, then those alarms in the past were still ringing. And this is sometimes if I have do not disturb on, I don't want to be disturbed. Also, especially not by birthday alarm uh, alarms in the middle of the night when we have like midnight a new day. So this is very nice that they added this option now in so it's less annoying. 
Um, let's go into the camera application. Not much has changed here, sadly. So still on the Xperia 10 Mark, um, 10 Mark III that we have here, we still don't have the access to all the camera modules on the back. We have three camera modules on the backs here, back here, and we are not able to use them. So that's a bit of a bummer, but at least they fixed the video options. So you can see here, I created a video of one of my favorite YouTubers here for audio and uh, IEMs and headphones, and there is me watching it. You can see that the video preview uh, is um, bright, so not as dark, this, this was an issue in the past. Uh, so this is fixed as well in the camera application. Nice that this is fixed. I think not all um, not all devices were affected by this. Then we have improved data connection in Android applications. We had in the past always the issue that sometimes you had to go into your Android app support and stop and start it again because you lost simply the data connection when you were switching from Wi-Fi to data or the other way around. This is now fixed hopefully with this new update and shouldn't have any issues. Talking about data, we have also of course Wi-Fi connections and if I go into Wi-Fi connections, I now have the option to see details of my Wi-Fi connection so I can see some details here, for example the frequency, uh, the signal strength and the maximum speed that is currently reported. This might change and I think, uh, no you cannot do anything besides editing it here. You cannot refresh it, you have to go out and then uh, go in again to show the details if I go closer or something changes with the maximum speed or the signal strength, it will show up here as well. And we can see also some basic information just like for example the IP address, uh, the gateway and uh, the DNS service for example, which is pretty handy indeed, especially if you want to debug some uh, issues with your Wi-Fi or network connection. Um, then we have uh, something that has been done under the hood, enabling hardware support for Vulkan. Vulkan is the new 3D kind of engine that is can be used for games, but also for user interfaces and so on. This has been now enabled with APIs and so on for the XA2, the 10, the 10 Mark II and the 10 Mark III. So this is, I think, also very nice that they added this in, especially useful, I think, also for the uh, for the Android app runtime and all the applications that can use this now. Then we have something that I probably cannot show you, but if you have notifications here, previously in the lock screen, uh, it shows the notification icons here. It was limited to four icons. Now we can show more than four icons, which is, I think, pretty, pretty nice indeed. Uh, the Spotify thing I showed you already on the lock screen, which is pretty nice. And yeah. We have some smaller items, smaller things like in the people app, if you have some coordinates of, of a person, for example, if the person lives uh, yeah, somewhere um, in New Zealand, for example, or you want to visit them or somewhere else where you don't know anything about them or how to go there, you have the possibility to click on this link and it open up in, uh, opens the, the, uh, the map application, one of the map applications. Uh, for the context so you can directly immediately navigate to them. Then something else that I think you saw for a split second is if I go in here we have a new keyboard icon here on the top which allows us to go into alphanumeric mode because we have now the possibility to set alphanumeric security codes for the device. This was a long requested uh, kind of uh, thing that uh, has been recently implemented. I think the groundworks were done, I think in last version already. And this allows you to set alphanumeric codes for the device, but I think also for the, um, uh, for the encryption key at the beginning when you boot up your device, which is pretty, pretty awesome as well. Otherwise you can um, still enter your code with your, your numeric code here as well. Then when we go into, uh, ringtones now we have a new ringtone volume option so if I go to sounds and feedback uh, feedback we have this ringtone volume here and the normal volume option that we can set the way we want to and the cool thing about this is now when you go in here and you click on go to top menu settings we have the option to now uh, turn on the possibility to set not only brightness but also ringtone volume and normal volume so how does it look like I just enable it and you will see we have now three sliders here for 
adaptive brightness or the brightness slider then the ringtone volume and the normal volume slider very very cool indeed that we have those options here um, yeah very very cool that we have the possibility to set a ringtone volume um, and the volume separately which is very very cool indeed um, we have also some other options here i think some options were there before but we have uh, lots and lots of options that we can configure here i think the usb one is pretty interesting as well and then we have also a new option under battery so when we go to battery we had in the past a battery saving mode but we have now the battery aging protection which allows us to set a threshold for how uh, much your device should charge especially with older devices like i'm thinking about the xa2 that is reaching a point where you have to think about maybe replacing the battery or at least um, putting some measure measures into place to protect the battery life stop charging at a specific percentage here like 80 or 90 percent might help in increasing the battery uh, battery's health and battery life then in, in the future so this is a very cool option that they added it here um, i think it's also on sony android devices so very very cool that we have it here and that's basically it my very com 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 summary compressed version of all the changes in this new uh, version there's some interesting changes especially also for developers new apis that are supported now in Salesforce sure as in harbor but some apis that are not available anymore so i'm talking about the cute webkit and silica web view that are now disallowed in harbor that does not mean that they don't work at all anymore but it is an indicator that they because they are so old and it's potential security risk nowadays that it makes sense to not use them anymore we have the replacement called sailfish web view and uh, yeah for every uh, developer that is still using the cute web kit or so uh, they should take a look at sailfish web view as well and they should take a look especially at the um, change log so the orientation is playing a little game with me the release notes especially because we have here um, good change log and we have of course more 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 data about this new version Caldav and Carter fixes for netcloud for nextcloud for example uh, more of the calendar stuff the connectivity things here everything nicely explained very very cool and uh, you have the possibility to dive in deep in here especially useful i think if you had bugs in the past is this list here so issues reported by users by the community fixed in this update there are lots and lots of those as you can see here and um, yeah too far too many to discuss here but lots and lots of things have been fixed and um, yeah i really like this new release of service as it's great that it's still doing new releases and i hope to see this kind of quality of a new release here in 4.5 where i only encountered one bug so far um, i really like uh, to see this in the future as well that is everything for this small little video and summary about the changes of SafeShares 4.5 it is in early access version right now so if you have a device but you're not registered for early access just wait a week or two until all the bugs maybe that are found are ironed out and the new version hits then the release shelves or release download service for everyone that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye